They say imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. If you've come across a fairly unique guitar that you would like to copy for yourself, stay with me. And by the end of this video, you should know how you can pretty much copy any design of guitar you would like. I'll go step by step and show you all the principles and little tricks to create a plan and a template. This is not going to be your run-of-the-mill fender, so stay with me. Let's copy a guitar. Hi, I'm Yoav and this is the Electric Luthier. P-type, LP-type and S-type are very common names of copies of some of our favorite guitars. And matching plans or templates can be found or bought in numerous places on the internet. But every now and then you'll find an original shape or design you just fancy, but you may not know how to approach it and how to turn that image you saw on Pinterest into an actual template you can start working with. I've lately had my eye on the Abassi line of guitars by Tosin Abassi. I've already ordered all the hardware I'll need for the guitar, well actually a budget version, and you can see the process for that in a video I'll link up here and in the description. This guitar has a few of the less standard features I wanted to incorporate in my next guitar and I also love the shape. There's also nothing standard about any of the parts. It's a 7 string fan fretted design with a unique ergonomic body. So everything is going to have to be custom made or tailored for it. You're going to need to find some good images of the guitar. In absence of actual plans or an accurate measurement, the better the image, the closer you'll hit the right shape and size. You'll also need some kind of graphic software, preferably with vector capabilities and the ability to reach good accuracy. You will also need the software to have the option of exporting a PDF format, so you'll be able to print out your plans in full size and full scale unless your computer is connected to a plotter. I'll be using Photoshop and it's definitely not the only one you can use. In fact, Illustrator or other vector-based programs may even be better suited for the task. I bring in my selected photo and I'll set up a fairly large document and use a 300 PPI to get better printing quality. You can do a lower resolution version, but the print quality may suffer. This will make for a fairly large document, where the images you will bring in from the internet will probably look tiny and will blur a little when scaled up. That's okay, we're just using them as reference. My document is going to be 1100 millimeters by 400 millimeters which is about 43 by 16 inches. Now I'm working with metric measurements. I figured if it's good enough for NASA, it's all right for me. I'll try and give imperial references for the metrically challenged, but when we get to the little things, it's gonna be metric. The principles are the same regardless. The first thing I do is put my center line as a guide. The next step will be to bring in the image and scale it to the correct proportions of the file. So when I draw the plans, they'll be in real size. I'll set one guide to be at the zero point and where I'll put the bridge for the high E string. Remember, this is multi-scale. I know that my high E string has a 25.5 scale length. So I'll use this as the proportions for scaling the image. I add another guide at the 25.5 inch point and start scaling the image until I can eyeball the bridge to the left guide and the nut to the right guide. I also give a slight rotation to try and align the fourth 
which is the middle string, to the center line. This whole process will be easier the better the quality of the photo and the higher the resolution. You have to take into account that accuracy is not going to be perfect here. As the photograph is not always exactly facing the guitar, and even if so, like this one, there's always a bit of lens distortion. We're using the photo to get as close as we can, and we will measure and correct it later, and finally on the template itself. If you know the exact size of the body, you can use that as well. But I figure a few millimeters difference to the shape of the body wouldn't make a real difference. Once I'm happy with the position, I use the pen tool and start tracing the contour of the body. The pen tool or whichever tool you have equivalent in your software will give me the combination of very smooth lines and corners while being able to easily make changes and adjustments at any time. To find the shape of the body behind the neck, I'll bring in the photo of the back. I'll flip it and scale it to also match the size of the frontal image. Due to difference in angles, the photos will not exactly match and I have to commit to one of them or do some kind of an average. I'll stay with the shape I drew of the front photo and just align the neck pocket area so I can trace it and finish the missing area. I go over the contour again to smooth it out and finalize the shape. After the line drawing, I'll either create a vector shape or save it as a vector mask, depending on your software of choice. Then I'll give it a black outline of a few pixels. This is not meant to be a Photoshop tutorial, but I do recommend using non-destructive methods, meaning that I can go back and revise almost every line and every step, so even if I make a mistake, I don't need to redo anything from scratch. A privilege we don't have with wood. I'll now create the outline for all the contours of the parts which will be removed and angled. Since there is a portion of the body which will stay the same, I'll just duplicate the front and start adjusting the control points. I'll be removing points, moving them and changing the handle's length until the correct shape is reached. If I was planning on building multiple guitars with this shape, I would create a template out of it. But for a single instrument, it will probably just be printed and traced since I'm not going to use it with a router. The next outline I'm going to trace are the corresponding shapes on the back. Again, I'll duplicate the front outline and use that as my starting point. I will not correct the differences between the front and the back outline, but just add in the more internal shapes so I can later trace them to the back and carve them away. Again, I remove or add control points where needed and stretch handles until I reach the required shape. Now that the main body shapes are there, I can go back and start putting the little details in. I start with the jack socket plate. Whenever possible, I'd prefer to use measurements of the actual hardware I'm going to be using. I jump over to the product page on AliExpress and look for the actual product size. I copy the image and paste it into my document. And then I use the guides to scale the image into the correct size. I will then trace the area I'll want to route out and create an outline for it. This is not a very standard position for the plug, so keep in mind the depth when routing. There's an arm contour on the other side and you do not want to go through it. 
The screws for bolting on the neck are next. I mark 5 mm circles and I also make a little X for the center as this is what is actually needed for both the hole itself and the indent will give it. I may shift the position slightly later after I have finalized the neck pocket itself. The final size for the hole and the indent for sinking the screw will be determined with the final hardware, but the center point is what really matters here. The back cover is up. I'm not sure I'll use it in its current shape, but it's easier to trace it now and have it printed just in case. I trace it in the same way as I did the outlines and save it as a vector mask. This way, I'll be able to later revisit it if I want to. Going back to the front, I'll mark the position of the three-way switch so I know it matches the panel at the back. Then I turn to the pickups. Here again, I try to look for the specs of the actual pickups I've ordered and not to the wonderfully expensive and probably amazing sounding Fishman Fluence. I find something similar, import the drawing, invert the color because they were black for some odd reason, and scale them to the correct proportions again using my guides. I position them in an angle so the magnets best fit the string's position so they correlate with the 24th fret and the bridge respectively. Now that we have all the major components, it's time to figure out the neck pocket. And for that, we need the neck. I'll still use the image for the headstock shape, but I need the actual measurements of the neck. I'm going to be using some different measurements than the original guitar. The nut I ordered is 51 millimeters wide. Remember, this is a seven string. And I've looked at some seven string bridges and decided to go with a 63 millimeter between the strings, which will work out to be 69.4 millimeters. I'll put one vertical guide at the nut on the center line and another on the bridge and then put the two guides with a total of 51 millimeters at the nut and two spaced 69.4 millimeters at the bridge. This way I can easily draw a large rectangle which will snap to the guides and give me the exact width of the neck from the nut to the bridge. Now I can duplicate this shape and just trim it to where the neck pickup is on one side and then to the shape of the body on the other side. A couple of more control points, a little stretching and a little maneuvering of the handles and we have our neck pocket. Last but not least is the headstock. I'll start tracing it with the pen tool again. If there's a part of this guitar I'm thinking of borrowing for other guitars as well, it's the headstock. I love the fact that it can work with different tuners configurations. I can see that my neck is a bit wider than the picture, so I'll wiggle it into place. As I did with the screws for the neck, I'll mark the position of the tuners with a 10 mm circle which is what my tuners actually need if I recall correctly, but mark the center with an X, as that is the starting point for drilling. I do like to check that the actual tuners can actually fit together in the back of the headstock before drilling, but that will happen later when they arrive. I always like to go over all the measurements once I have all the hardware and have made all the final decisions. But once that's done, all we still need to do is place all the parts side by side for printing these plans and we're done. 
I am planning to build this guitar in the near future and I may even enter it into the great guitar build off of 2021. You can find links of some of the builds related videos in the description and at the end of the video. If you found this useful or entertaining, please like and subscribe. And until the next video comes out, there's much more information at theelectricluthier.com. But don't just read and watch it. Go ahead, build a guitar.